Store-bought jams and jellies are absolutely filled with sugar and sometimes artificial flavorings and colorings. And that's just not anything that we want in our diet. But if I'm being totally honest, traditional canning recipes for home canning jams and jellies are not often that much better. A lot of times they have more sugar in them than they actually call for fruit. And that's just way too much sugar. None of us need that much in our diet. So today I'm gonna to show you my secret method for reducing the amount of sugar in my jams and jellies and maybe even using something besides refined sugar like honey or maple syrup. Let's check it out. Our strawberries did not do very well this year. It's just not been a good year for them. The ones that we are getting are not making it into the house. <laughs> They're getting eaten on the way from the garden to the house. And so when I saw some strawberries at a local fruit stand, I knew that I really wanted to have them so we could make this recipe. This is a strawberry rhubarb jam and it is sweetened instead of with regular sugar, it's sweetened with honey. What I love about this recipe though, is that you can choose to sweeten it with whatever you want. You can use regular sugar, you could use maple syrup, you can use honey, you can use Splenda, you could use whatever it is that you have on hand to use and the jam will still turn out great. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Today, we're going to be using honey. Now, here we are at the rhubarb patch. While we didn't get a ton of strawberries, we have been getting a ton of rhubarb. You can see it's doing really well this year. I wanna end up with about two cups of mashed and cooked rhubarb. So I'm gonna grab myself about eight really big stalks here and take them into the kitchen. Well, I got a little carried away, so I think I have more than I intended. We'll have leftovers for something else. So let's get into the kitchen and make some jam. When it comes to the actual ingredients we're gonna need for this jam, they're actually really very simple, very minimal. You're going to want two cups of mashed strawberries. In order to get two cups of mashed strawberries, you're probably gonna wanna start with about four cups of whole strawberries. We're gonna hoe them, we're gonna mash them up, and then we're going to measure out those two cups. Same thing with the rhubarb. We're looking for about two cups of chopped cooked rhubarb. So we're gonna start with about four cups chopped. We're gonna add a little bit of water to it and we're gonna cook it down for just a few minutes, just until it starts to get soft. Then we're gonna measure out two cups of it. You'll also need some honey because we're gonna sweeten this one with honey or some other sweetener. Again, you could use sugar, you could use maple syrup, would be absolutely delicious, or you could use any other sugar that you like to use. You could even use a fruit juice concentrate if you wanted, like a white grape juice concentrate or an apple juice concentrate. The directions for using them are a little bit different than what we're gonna show here today, but you could definitely do that. Then in addition to the sweetener, you're going to need some Pomona's pectin. Now, this is my favorite pectin. This is what I use in my home all the time. I love it how it gives you a lot of flexibility about how much sweetener and what type of sweetener you get to use. You can find it in the little blue boxes or you can get it like I do, bulk by the pound as your standard carries it. It's a little expensive, but it stores indefinitely and it will get you a long ways through a lot of jam. Inside the Pomona's pectin, you actually have two different packets. You have your pectin packet and you have your calcium packet. We're gonna talk about how to use those in just a minute. So once you have all of those ingredients, you are ready to go. We love having tons of rhubarb around. We've gotten to where we put it in all sorts of things and it's really good. But my kids eat it raw and 
It's good, but it's really sour. <laughs> I think I'll stick with my coffee. <laughs> I obviously have way more rhubarb here than I need, but that's okay. We'll just add it to our morning oatmeal tomorrow morning and it'll be great. But I wanna start by putting this into a pot. Heavy bottomed is always best for cooking all in there and just covering the bottom with a little bit of water and then bringing it to a light simmer just to cook it until it softens up. I love this spoon. One of my daughters made it for me. She actually carved it. So I'm just gonna give it a stir every so often just to make sure that nothing is sticking to the bottom as this comes up to heat. Okay, and while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna prep the strawberries. They've already been washed and slightly dried or let to sit for a few minutes so the water drains off. And we're just gonna pop off their tops and put them right on in the bowl. Now you could use a food processor or possibly even a blender if you're really careful, but it does change the final texture of the jam. You actually have to use a little bit more pectin if you're gonna use a food processor because it just liquefies it a little bit too much, too much surface area on that fruit. And uh, so it's best if you just go ahead with the hand mashing when you're following a recipe, unless you're actually following a recipe for the food processor, especially when it comes to something like berries. This is one of those little gadgets that makes your life so much easier when you have it, even though it's just the silliest little tool, but it is actually a strawberry holer. You could use the end of a spoon, but I find that these things work so well just for this job. I think you can get them on Lehman's. I think that's where I got mine, but I, you know, it's a little $2 tool and I've used this one for probably a decade. Now, when you're making jams or jellies, it's always best to not have overripe produce. I know we wanna kinda lock that produce in at the height of its ripeness, which is wonderful, but you also don't want it too ripe. Um, because of the pectin. It will actually change the way the pectin works. So in general, you're looking for something that is about three quarters of the way ripe. Of all the strawberries you have, you want some that about a quarter of them are a little underripe. And the three quarters of them, nice and all the way ripe. You don't want anything that's starting to get mushy or a little past its prime. That just won't give you anything good when it comes to preserves. All right, and we're just gonna give them a mash. Now, the larger that your pieces of fruit are, the more likely you are to have something that's called fruit float in your jar. And that's where your fruit and your jam section, like the liquidy sec section, separate. And you end up with the fruit maybe on the top and the gel on the bottom. So you wanna get it kinda nice and small, but not blender small. Not even food processor small. Ooh, I wish you guys could smell this. Both the rhubarb cooking and the strawberries just smell amazing. Ooh, it's making my mouth water. <laughs> the strawberries are good. We're just gonna wait for the rhubarb to cook down a little bit more. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go prepare five pint-sized jars and get their lids out and ready to go. So I'm gonna wash the jars in hot, soapy water and get them nice and dry and then I am going to get out brand new canning lids and make sure those are clean along with their rings that are gonna go on the top. I have my jars and their lids and the bands all set up. I also have a jar lifter, a good ladle, you'll want one of those, and a funnel, that's important. You've gotta have a funnel. I have my pot that I'm gonna cook my jam in and I have my canner. It's already filled with water and it has rack inside of it. Before we take any further steps though, we need to prepare what's called our calcium water. This is specific to Pomona's pectin. So if you're using a different type of pectin, one, this recipe probably won't work, but two, you probably won't have this calcium. This calcium water is what allows us to use uh, really low amounts of sugar or no sugar at all. It lets us use all different types of sweetener. So it's, it's a really good thing to work with. In this jar, I just have half a cup of plain water 
pan, I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of calcium powder in there and mix it up. Now this will have more than half a teaspoon of calcium powder in this little packet, so you'll be able to make later batches of it. And the good news is, is the calcium water itself will store in the refrigerator for at least a year. So once you make up a batch, you're good to go for a while. So there we go, half a teaspoon. I'm gonna fold this packet right back up so I can put it right back in and save it for later. Put the lid on and just give it a really good shake until it's really well mixed. And now we have our calcium water all ready to go. Make sure you label this. I don't see my pin right now. Ah, there's a pin. <laughs> Thank you. All right, make sure you label this with calcium water so you know exactly what it is and how to use it. The rhubarb is almost there. Let's get our jars heated up. We always wanna start with warm jars and we wanna start with warm water in our canner. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my jars and stick them on in the canner. Right now the canner's off, but I'm just gonna fill them up with this good clean water that's in there just to weight them down so they don't rattle all over the place. And then I'm gonna turn my canner on to just about low. I don't wanna bring the canner to a boil at this point. I'm just looking to get it warm and to just barely steaming and hold it at that temperature until I'm ready to fill the jars, get the filled jars back in, and then we'll put it up to a full boil. We'll bring it up to a full boil. But for now, we're just trying to warm everything up. That rhubarb is ready. Look at it, it's all nice and soft and mushy. It is ready to go. So let's measure out our fruit. I'm looking for two cups of strawberries. I happen to know that this ladle has an eight ounce bowl. It's one cup, a scoop, a nice full scoop. Could you just measure it out? And two cups of strawberries and two cups of rhubarb. I'm gonna take my extra rhubarb and I'm just gonna stick it in a jar and store it in the refrigerator until I can get it right into some oatmeal or a baked good, some muffins or anything like that, or turn it into a dessert. All of those will completely work. So this will store in your refrigerator for several days, just like fresh fruit. There's also some really good recipes out there for 100% rhubarb jam using the Pomona's pectin. So you can use some lower sugar or some alternate sugars. And that would be amazing with this too. So you could just make a different type of jam. I'm just gonna put the strawberries right in there. And get that in the refrigerator. To our mashed fruit combination here, we're gonna add three teaspoons of our calcium water. You do wanna give it a really good shake right before you measure it out, just to make sure it's all incorporated in. And measure out three teaspoons. And our fruit mixture is ready to go into a pot. Again, make sure you're using a nice, heavy bottomed pot. It'll keep it from scorching. And we're going to turn this on to low just to bring it back up to heat. We're gonna prepare our honey and pectin mixture. For this, you're gonna take your half cup of honey. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's slightly warm. Maybe you've just left it in a warm spot so that it's not cold. Definitely not cold to be too hard to work with. And we're gonna incorporate three teaspoons of the pectin powder. One, two, and three. It's really important to get this thoroughly mixed. If you were using a sugar, you would just have the sugar in a bowl and you would mix your pectin powder right on through it. If you're using a maple syrup, you do kind of the same thing as we're gonna do here. But the important part is you want it really, really well incorporated. You don't want clumps of the pectin because you'll end up with clumps of pectin in your final jam and that's not any good. Bring your fruit mixture up to a full boil. 
One of the things I absolutely love about Pomona's pectin, and actually the reason I started years, using it for my family many, many years ago, is that you can reduce the recipe and you can also multiply the recipe. You can't do that with most types of pectins. You can't multiply the recipe and do a double batch or a quadruple batch because the pectin just won't hold up the same way and you'll end up with runny jam. But with Pomona's you can do really big batches. You can also can this in smaller jars if you want. You can do the pints like we're doing today, but you could do half pints, you could even do quarter point pints, and you just do it the exact same way. You'll just obviously need more jars. When this comes up to a full boil that cannot be stirred down, which means right now when I go to stir it, it stops boiling for a second. That's not at a full boil. So I'm gonna let it come up just a little bit more. Once it gets to that point, I'll know that I am ready to add my pectin and honey mixture. If you're working with honey, you will definitely want a spatula of some sort so you can get it all out of your measuring cup. And this is actively boiling while I am stirring it so I know that it's ready to go ahead and add all of this honey pectin mixture. Just get it all in there best you can. Stirring while you go. We're going to want to stir vigorously for about two minutes. That's just so that really incorporates in and it doesn't clump up. I've got to say, working with a liquid sweetener like honey or like maple syrup is actually a lot easier on this process. When you're working with sugar, it's a lot easier to get it to clump on accident. Stir, stir, stir. And you're looking to bring it back up to a boil and stir for about two minutes. So a boil, two minutes, sometimes one happens first, sometimes the other happens first, but you have to get up to a boil before you're done. You'll want to make sure that your jars are coming up to that temperature back here, your water's coming up to temperature because this will start setting up fairly quickly. So we want to be ready to roll as soon as this is done. So be ready with your setup to be able to ladle right on into your jars. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's grab the jars. This is steaming really nicely but uh, I have a tip for you here, and that is when you go to dump out your jars, if you dump them out this way, sometimes that water will run right down here and hit your hands, and you don't want burnt hands. So make sure you do it this way, where the water is leaving right between the little bars of your jar holder. We're working with a small enough batch here, and we're gonna get this filled up really quickly that we can go ahead and pull out all of the jars at once and just work with them one at a time. They'll stay plenty hot during that time. I have my handy ladle. I've got my funnel all set up. I have a very, very clean cloth that is damp with water so I can wipe my rims. And I also have a bubble popper tool. You could use just a wooden chopstick or a wooden skewer or a plastic tool. Preferably not metal because that will scrape your jar so that we can get the bubbles out. And just fill it right on up. Jams and jellies have a headspace of about a quarter of an inch right at the top, so just get it nice and tight against the top there. This is probably only going to fill about two and a half of these pints because we're talking about five cups of jam, and that'll be just fine because we'll have that half pint left over for being able to taste it. We'll stick that right in the refrigerator instead of canning it. Again, if you wanna make a larger batch, you can definitely go ahead and double this recipe, triple the recipe, quadruple the recipe. Depends on how much fruit you have on hand. Okay, two and a half. I'm gonna just run my bubble popping tool right down along the edge. Just make sure there's no big bubbles in there. Small ones are not a problem, but just those big ones. And then wipe the rims. Make sure there's no jam right on the rim. Uh-oh, look what I found. This jar has nicks. 
in the rim of it. This will not seal. So usually I check these a little more carefully before I start, but I miss these. So I'm going to go ahead and just transfer this. It is a little hot. Right on into a different jar. This is why I always have extra prepared jars when I'm canning. You just never know what you're gonna run into, whether it's a nick in your jar or it is extra uh, preserves that you weren't expecting. That can definitely happen. Okay, get it nice and clean. Get your lids on. Hold them right on through and put your bands on with a good finger tight. You just don't wanna crank it down there. You don't need to uh, call the strong guy in your household in to crank them down, nothing like that. You don't want that. That'll cause your lids to actually buckle and oftentimes not to seal well if you are over cranking it. So just get them screwed on there and then right into the canner. When we're water bath canning, we want our jars covered with water to about an inch over the top of them. So at this point, once you get those jars in there, you're gonna wanna adjust that level. Put the lid back on and you can turn your heat up a little bit to medium high bring it up to a full rolling boil. Now, once it gets to a full rolling boil, we're going to can this for 10 minutes if you live at sea level. For every thousand feet you live above sea level, you're gonna to wanna to add a minute. So for me, I would be at about 13 minutes. Once your timer goes off, then you turn off the heat. Okay, I have a few minutes now. I can go get everything all cleaned up. This guy gets to be the tester. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> mm, what a wonderful flavor. This is gonna be so good in like jam thumbprint cookies or little tarts. Of course, it'll also be good on biscuits or on toast. It is just a great way to use those strawberries and that rhubarb. This guy, since we're not going to can him. We're going to put him right in the refrigerator and he'll last there for about three weeks. So will these once they're open and off the shelf. Once you open them up, they'll be about three weeks in the refrigerator that you'll have to use them up. The timer just went off, so we're ready to go ahead and turn the heat off on the canner. Take the lid off and let it sit here with the lid off for five minutes. This is going to let it equalize in pressure so that you don't have a bunch of siphoning. Now that it's been sitting for five minutes, we're ready to take the jars out of the canner. Look at that beautiful color. Set them on a towel on the counter where you can let them sit for at least overnight. We don't want to disturb them once they start kind of setting up there. We're gonna let these cool down for at least 12 hours or until the entire jar is cool to the touch, top and bottom. And then we'll check them out, take the next steps. Our jars of jam have been sitting for, well, overnight now, so they are definitely cool. So let's check them out. Okay, first thing we wanna do is check for a seal. And yes, they are well sealed. So we know we can go ahead and take off their bands. You don't really wanna store your jars <clears throat> with the bands on. Next, we want to go ahead and clean them up a little bit, just a little bit of water stained the top here. You never wanna put anything sticky or dirty away in your pantry. These are just a little bit of minerals from the water in the canner that's dried, so we can just wipe them off. And then, like always, make sure that you label, label, label what it is and the year that you made it so it's in there. These jars though will stay on your shelf and they will be amazingly great for up to two years 
They'll taste really good. Usually we try to transition them. We try to use everything that we have in stock in about a year, so we're replacing it every year. That way it stays at its highest flavor and highest nutritional value. But these will be delicious for at least a year, probably up to two years. Okay, and pop that lid off and let's take a peek at it. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, I'd like to can, but I don't feel real sure about the canning process, I have a great video, free video set for you guys. You can check it out. I'll put the link down in the description. Look at this jam, you guys. Oh, it looks so good. And it just smells like summertime. It smells so good. Oh, absolutely amazing. Nice thick gel and no refined sugar in there. Oh, that is absolutely delicious. It has a nice light honey flavor. It's not overwhelming with the flavor of honey. You guys, if you are interested in canning, check out how to make the best pickles right here.